So, Ed. Yes, sir. I assume that uh, you're not applying any kind of force, um, transitions, or anything to the player itself. Because, as we know, it's the background and the ground and everything that's actually moving, as you say, and the player is really static. So, according yeah, to... Well, actually, there's only one. There are two forces. Gravity. Right, right. Okay, we got... And gravity. then I do use an impulse. So, when the player is going along and I click the screen... Yep. I apply an impulse directly up, and that's just okay. the value that I experimented with until I got the response that I wanted. Right. Okay. okay. So in my latest game, um, the, the, the most difficult part that I, I was having was uh, there's, what, uh, three or four different type of impulses uh, that one can use, uh, linear, angular, and I think a couple others. Yeah. And I, I couldn't figure out you know, from the documentation, to trying to figure out, well, which one should I use? Why would I use this one as opposed to that one? Uh, do you have any answer to that um, in relation to your game? Sure. Okay, so what is a linear versus an angular impulse? A linear impulse is an impulse. It's a force. Well, first of all, what's an impulse versus force? Right. <laughs> yeah, force, exactly. So it's a, that's a little bit sketchy to describe, but the, the core of it is, is that an impulse is supposed to mimic an instantaneous velocity change. Um, it's like a kick versus a steady force, which is supposed to be pl applied over time. So uh, when you use set force, which is one of the functions available to you in Corona, that is meant to be applied every frame or every specific period on a repeating cycle mm. to give you a nice smooth acceleration in a sense. Whereas an impulse is generally designed to be used once. It's, it's supposed to be like an instantaneous acceleration but it doesn't really come out that way. Really what it is, it's like a strong force applied and then a little bit of physics is done. How much mass does the object have? What's the response that I get? So would a good comparison or would it be a fair comparison to say that one uh, is sort of an internal force, kind of like you driving a car and you're pressing your foot on the accelerator and thus you go faster. Um, and you may press the accelerator just once, you go faster for a while, and of course gravity and friction and such, you know, slow you down. While the other one is an external force, which would be the equivalent of maybe someone coming behind you and hitting you thus propelling you forward, but it was external as opposed to internal. Is that a fair you know, comparison? I, I want to say yes, but when you do the math, both of those come out to be the same thing. When you do the approximation math... Sort of. Okay, but let's, let's, it's, it's, uh, just, I, I like to think of an impulse versus set force. Is the impulse for the same value is going to give me a lot more boost the because impulse. of the way it's applied by the engine. Okay, okay. So I would not apply an impulse every frame because it would be too much, whereas set yeah. force, I can get a nice smooth... I mean, there's more going on under the engine there, and I wish we had somebody here who had actually dug into the box 2D code, because yeah. they could probably clarify it for us, the difference. Right. But the, the distinction for people who are listening is if you want to apply a force one time as if you're smacking something, using your analogy, externally, use impulse, set impulse. Mm -hmm. Linear impulse uh, or or angular, and I'll get to the difference between those. Okay. But if you're going to be applying a thrust, like a rocket or yes. uh, the uh, the what you consider the like your wheels turning on a vehicle, yes. use set force. Okay. So what's the difference? What is a linear impulse versus an angular impulse? Oh, yeah. An, an impulse and actually any force except for the angulars is going to be applied to a body at a specific point. So set force and linear impulse are both applied to a body, and you have to tell them the magnitude of this impulse or force and where to apply it. Mm -hmm. So if you apply a force to a body at its center, what will that do? What it will do is it will move the body in the direction of the force without applying any rotation. Right. So impulse, set impulse and set force are both generally supposed to be used to move bodies in a straight line. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to, if you want to give the uh, an offset, so let's say not exactly in the center, 
right. what you'll get is the body will still try to move in that line, but there will be some torque around the uh, centroid or yeah around the centroid, which is the center part of the body. And there, there's a proper name which I'm not using because uh, it's not coming to mind. Uh, anyways, the point is is that you'll get some rotation out of that. Mm -hmm. But that's not always what you want. Sometimes what you would like, let's say if you have wheels on your vehicle and you would like to, you would like the wheels to drive the body. So the, bod the wheels are attached to the body with a pivot joint. Mm -hmm. And then the wheels have friction, and they can touch the ground, but they don't touch. They don't interact with the body through the the physics mechanism. There's no collision. Right. You can give the wheels a rotation by using uh, angular uh, velocity, set angular velocity, I believe it is. My, oh, oh, impulse. We're talking about impulse still. Right. So in the impulse case, you want to give the wheels a kick. Right, you just want them to go burn out or something like that. Great. Then you would use the angular impulse. <laughs> I saw you smile there, Charles. <laughs> and they would get this rapid uh, acceleration, temporary, but it wouldn't be sustained. It would bleed off through um, uh, damping and through friction. Well, both of the impulses will bleed off or dampen, and you can set the dampening. I, I know from a property. Yeah. Uh, but I'm still trying to figure out what's the difference if I had a circular object and I wanted to apply a linear force to its center and I wanted to apply a angular force to its center. Okay, well, the, the big difference is if you apply an angular force to any object, it's going to tell that object to rotate around the point that you've specified. Actually, do you specify a position on the angulars? I can't remember. Let me, let me I can't check. remember either. And I'm looking it up right now. And how does all this relate to the, the green machine? <laughs> <laughs> angular impulse. Okay, so angular impulses are by definition always around the center of the object. That's what gotcha. I thought. Okay, there you go. Yes, okay. So, okay, the only time you'd want, if you want to create an object that rotates, you're going to want to use an angular force or right. an angular impulse. However... Right. If you want to do the more complicated scenario that I outlined before, where it's more like a lever, mm -hmm. then you would use angular force. Uh, I'm sorry, linear force. Ugh, I can't say the right thing here. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. Uh, you would use uh, uh, linear impulse right. or linear velocity. Yeah. Because then you're going to get not only a motion in a direction, but you're also, if you offset where you apply that force, you're going to get some leverage on it, and you're going to cause it to rotate a little bit. Mm -hmm. A great example of this would be, let's say you created a game, a shooter, where your rocket ship in your game had two engines, one on either side, and you allowed the engines to be damaged, where they would work at a lower efficiency if they right. were damaged. Right. Then if you were applying force in two different places because the the forces are additive in right. uh, in um, box 2D. Right. And then you said, well, my right engine's damaged, so it's only going to be 80% of the force. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon the ship would start to veer to the right because it's not getting as much force. Right. Right. So, hopefully that that's a good example. Cool. Thanks.